What is the biggest purchase you've ever made? How much would you say you spend every single week? What is the number one way you make money as a college student? How much would you say you make every single month? 40 grand doing an internship at Amazon. 40 grand at Amazon. What? Harvard University, one of the top schools in the world with the best research facilities, business programs, and medical schools. But what Harvard's famously known for more than anything, this place is really fucking expensive. After taking everything into consideration, the average cost of attendance here comes out to a whopping $83,000 a year. And even though a year's tuition is almost double what the average American makes, for most Harvard students, this price tag doesn't phase them at all. I mean, considering two of the world's richest people have a Harvard background, I think it's safe to say that making money isn't necessarily an issue for the students here. The average salary for a Harvard graduate comes out to over six figures in the first year, and for a good handful of students, they're making 10 times that while they're still in college. So today, we're back on the Harvard Yard to ask a ton of different students exactly how they make their money. From trust fund babies, to broke college students, to even a couple college millionaires out there, we're checking all the boxes today, baby. So you know, we're gonna skip all the icebreakers here. I have a very serious question right off the bat, but you gotta be honest with me, okay? What's your favorite color? Honestly, black. Purple? Purple. Blue. Blue? Wait, actually, yellow, yellow. Yellow? Oh, <laughs> a little turnaround here. Oh, see, I told you he looked like a purple guy, huh? You gave off purple from a mile away. I was telling him earlier. Nah, it's a... Uh black all day every day <laughs> <laughs> so now you feel warmed up now you feel good yes 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 all right let's do it then so first question what is your name where are you from and what are you studying at Harvard my name is David Anderson Jasmine Ye Taryn Lee Maria Faval William Talley Tristan Dalby Nader El Sadi I'm from East Lansing Michigan Scottsdale Arizona Long Island New York Atlanta Georgia Fulton County for those of you who know Pittsburgh Pennsylvania Boca Raton Florida Austin Texas Miami Florida and I'm studying neuroscience and global health economics applied math Applied math. Applied math. Studying applied mathematics. Neuroscience and religion. Government. Econ. Media, medicine, and health at the medical school. I'm kind of in the government department and also doing East Asian studies, so Japan and China. Ooh, okay, very diverse over here. And what do you plan on doing with that major? I mean, to be honest, like high goals, like my mom worked on Wall Street, so I'd like to follow in her footsteps. Get into a big finance job in Wall Street, that's my biggest goal. I was wanting to go work on Capitol Hill for a little while, but now I'm starting to like look towards some private equity or finance. And some private sector stuff, maybe some multilaterals. And either sticking to research or just going to medical school in a couple of years. Apply to med school next year. I also want to go to medical school and I want to be a health correspondent, but specifically a journalist. I want to do journalism and opinion writing as a physician so hopefully the next step after this is medical school. Low-key I have no idea as long as I'm making those bands you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not really sure yet. It really depends. I mean it depends if I go into applied math and econ or applied math and computer science. There are a bunch of different projects that I would like to do in my lifetime, a bunch of different countries that I would like to visit. I'm not really sure what I want to do there yet but you know got to get to New York you know what I'm saying. Hell yeah. Next Wolf of Wall Street right yeah. here. Dude Jordan Belfort in the making bro y'all just wait. <laughs> Now getting into the more nitty gritty here, on average, if you had to give an estimate, how much would you say you spend every single week? Mm. Every single week? Um, I would say I spend $100 a week. $80. $80? 50, 70. Around 50 to 75 bucks a week. Maybe around like $40. $40, dang, that is very frugal. I'm not a big spender. I try to spend as little as possible. I'm kind of frugal. I'm really on that um, grad student sort of budget. Maybe like 150-ish. 100 and 150. 200 and 250 a week, I would say. 200 minimum. What are we talking, Max? Like 300, 400. That's not bad at all, actually. Really? It's very frugal out here, I love it. And what would you say you like spend the most on? Probably at this particular point, food. Food. Food, literally everything. It's just on food. I'm hungry all the fucking time. <laughs> I mean, the dining hall sometimes here gets boring. It's like the same food. Tasty Burgers open until 12 o'clock at night, so you gotta spend 20 bucks there. Go to CVS, you get some groceries. It's mostly just groceries and then like food. Mostly just like sweet treats, drinks, coffee. It's a big one. Dinner. Straight food. Yeah, only food, snacks. Hey man, being a Harvard athlete, it does it to you. It depends on like what I order on Amazon. Like if I need specific things. This past month, for instance, I spent a lot on sort of like home goods, so bed sheets, laundry detergent, these sorts of things that you need to make your life keep going. But you know, like going out with friends on the weekends. Saturday nights with a friend group is a big one. I like to go out on the weekend, so either like some trips with my friends to Cape Cod or nearby. Can't get too into the details. We're on the team, bro. I would say mainly on just like outings and not really like food or drinks. Ooh. That is very unique. I love that. Everyone else has said food today, so I'm so happy you said that. And building off of that, how much would you say you make every single month? I make zero dollars a month. <laughs> 
<laughs> zero dollars. Zero dollars of income all time. I don't work right now. I don't have a job or do I, I swim like zero. Zero dollars. All right. I don't, I don't have a job. Zero dollars a week or a month or whatever. During the summer, yeah, but not right now. How much did you make during the summer? Well, I've got a couple of different income streams. At this particular point, probably about twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. A thousand dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Four, five hundred, depending on how much I worked. I would say like seven hundred dollars a week. Seven hundred a week. Okay. I was kind of on that gig economy grind. I mean, it's not a lot, but like in my summers, I was making about twenty k total comp. I did work. Before before I came here. I had a business or that I sold right before I came here and offloaded, so. How much did you sell it for? The business evaluation, I think it was 25,000. Ooh, okay, okay. I have not worked a single day in my life. Hey, that's okay, that's okay. You still ended up at Harvard. That's more than me, so. And now the question that everyone's been waiting for here. What is the number one way you make money as a college student? Right now, <laughs> I am not making money, but I know a lot of people get part-time jobs around campus, and I know there's a lot of opportunities for that. Harvard does really, really well at like offering us jobs. There's like Harvard Student Agencies, which is just a big organization that really just employs students here. And it's a funny story, I'm actually uh, delivering mail for the Harvard here. In my undergrad, I worked part-time. I was. Uh, patient care technician so I worked in a hospital setting and I worked like 20 hours a week. Right now I'm like a TF for a class and we work like 10 hours a week. I tutored like private tutoring. I teach here. I just came for my teaching awards. I was teaching like bio, chem, anatomy, things like that. Wow look at you a Harvard teacher awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't say all of that, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, it depends on what you want. Like, if you're looking for, like, summer internships, I feel like yeah, the best way is yeah. definitely to, like, fill out your resume and stuff like that. You could work summer internships and get paid by the college, if it, even if it's an unpaid internship. One of our boys says he's making, like, 40 grand next summer doing an internship at Amazon, so you can kind of, like, if you got the stack resume, you can definitely get a job here. 40 grand at Amazon? Yeah. What? And I have a couple rapid-fire questions for you here. You ready? Yeah. You sure? Yes. All right, let's get right into it. First question. What is the biggest purchase you've ever made? Jesus. Uh, Probably like stuff for my dorm room. My flute. My iPad I just got for the school. The PlayStation I bought with my own money. Probably my Mac. A trip to Santorini. A flight to China. How much are we talking? Like I would say like around $3,000. Something like that. Whoa. The equipment for the business I started cost me 1200 bucks. I spent like $400 on Jordans once. Woo! Engagement ring, 15K. <laughs> Ooh. Did you pop the question? Uh, yeah. Ooh, how'd it go? It was more like, what took you so long? <laughs> I don't pay for my stuff. I don't know. I'm 19 for context, so my Ooh. parents covered mostly everything. So you're 19 in a master's? Yeah. Holy shit, good yeah. for you. What is the bougiest thing you've seen a student do here? The bougiest thing? There's some people here that travel a lot, like on private jets, I've heard. Private jets. I had a close friend who took his girlfriend to Paris uh, just for spring break. <laughs> wow, yeah. W Riz from that yeah, guy. Yeah. Probably just the international students living their daily lives. It just gets rich and expensive, and their outfits are beautiful. There was this one kid I met who never, like you have to have the all-inclusive dining, but he never went to the dining hall and he ate out every single day for four years. You walk out of your dorm, you kind of expect to see people wearing like designer clothes and then like shit you don't see on the street. <laughs> one of our teammates, bro, is, is styling. He was wearing like Gucci slips. I've seen a lot of uh, Gucci belts. There's this thing before school, freshman orientation program, where you go and like camp for a week and it's like dirty, muddy, and there was this one kid, I heard a story, he only wore like Gucci shorts and he's like, well these are the only shorts I have and we're told to bring shorts so like holy yeah. shit yeah that's that's a different level there <laughs> what is the cheapest thing you've ever done the cheapest thing I've done oh man I've like walked really far for food that's like like cheaper hop around like different places for free just because I have friends everywhere I mean I love paying change at the fast food place I'm part of like a group chat that just tells us where like free food is and so if ever I'm hungry I'll just check the group chat and just go even if I'm not part of the event not supposed to be there I'll just go get a couple plates and you know I like to just eat off free samples I buy I eggs and that's like my main source of food right now. Eggs for breakfast, eggs for lunch. Eggs. Eggs. Eggs, man. Hey, lifesaver over here. And I have one final question. It's a little philosophical. Do you think that money equals happiness? Absolutely not. No. No, no, no. I'm currently taking a class literally called happiness, and we talk about how money doesn't involve bringing in happiness. So I completely disagree. At least material things can't, like, love you back. So it's the people that you surround yourself with that really make you happy. I think that money is not, like, necessary in order to guarantee happiness, but it does make a lot of things easier. And I don't think that money equals happiness, but I do think think that money helps a lot in achieving happiness for a lot of people. Money does lead to the things that can cause happiness. A necessary means to the yeah. end. 
Yeah. Ah, see, I'm catching on here. Like, if you have money, yes, you can buy things that'll make you happy. You can even make other people happy. But that doesn't mean that if you don't have money, you're not happy. I mean, if you're unhappy, it won't like make you happy. But if you're a happy person, it can make you happier. Some people say it doesn't, bro. But like, it, you'd be hard pressed to find someone living in like the Hamptons that's really upset. You know what I'm saying? I think financial stability is really important to feel happy when your basic needs are secured. I think after a certain threshold, happiness is what you make it. I don't think that like you can really be happy if every single day you're worrying about where your next meal is going to come from. So I think a better question than does money equal happiness might be, how much money do you think you need in order to be happy? Oh, I like that flipping the script on me here. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. Harvard approved, money does not equal happiness. Wow. I mean, the deep philosophical advice is kind of expected here, but seeing just how frugal these kids are, that's some really impressive shit. And I mean, considering I gave away all my money last week, I need to take some notes. And if you want to see me go broke, you can check out that video and a bunch of other Harvard videos right here. And if you want to join the family of over 11,000 subscribers now, you can click right here. So until then, I'm gonna try and make back some money here, and I will see you guys next week. I got bills. I got pay. Oh, and I have a podcast. A podcast? <laughs> Fuck it, what's the name? Under the Microscope. Under, ooh, I like that. Yeah.